Scott Field. Joining us now, Sid Salter, political analyst, chief communications officer, director of the Office of Public Affairs at Mississippi State University. Sid, thanks for coming on. Always good to see you, my friend. My pleasure, Gerard. Thank you for being here. We were just talking off the air. I don't think we could have timed this event any better with the big news affecting the uh, the local area here. No, uh, exciting. Uh, it's, it's great for the region. It's great for Mississippi State University, great for Starkville. Uh, but a real tribute not only to the economic developers uh, but to uh, really the entire region we, we've got uh, we've got the right airport we've got the right transportation system uh, we've got the right developers that are uh, responsive and we had political leadership uh, from the local level up to the uh, state and federal level that came together to uh, make this happen and and this is not just uh, news in mississippi this is news all over the country that's right mississippi state has uh, a role along with our uh, higher education partners there's workforce training available there's r d available uh, and and all of these institutions have a role to play in it so uh, we're we're very excited as an institution about what this uh, does to improve uh, our future just as well as, as those who will be seeking and winning those $93,000 jobs. Absolutely. And, and we should uh, say in connection with that, great people in the area, and the company knows that. They absolutely know that. They wouldn't do this. They wouldn't make this investment if they were not confident in the quality of the people that will be working in those businesses well the the bottom line when you look at uh, companies that are in mississippi raytheon uh, others in the defense industry uh, they don't come here for moonlight and magnolias they come here <laughs> because they know people uh, can get the job done they will perform at a high level they will come in under budget and on time and and that is the bottom line so uh, as, as you mentioned earlier uh in your in your last segment uh this will reverberate with other companies. They'll say, well, if Steel Dynamics uh, sees the worth of locating a major facility in Mississippi, maybe we ought to give that a thought, too. I, I guarantee you that that will be the case it, it, because if folks want to see other people dip their toes, so to speak, and then plunge into the water before they do. And when they say, hey, that worked out pretty well, and then they follow suit. I mean, that, that happens over and over again. So. Uh, these kinds of projects are often springboards for future projects. No doubt. And I think that will happen here. So, And, and that's how the entire state uh, benefits because the next project that, that looks to locate in Mississippi may, for a variety of reasons, look to a different area of the state, but it's still within the state. And I think we're blessed to have a government that's not so a state government, not anti-private sector. And, and the private sector knows that, and that plays a big role. You don't want to go locate in a state, and we're seeing a lot of that right now. We're seeing exoduses of businesses out of those states because the government's uh, got their heel on their neck, and it doesn't work. I, I agree, and I think one thing that also uh, flies under the radar in economic development is, is basic quality of life. Uh, we have... Uh, here in the Golden Triangle, particularly in Starkville, uh, we have an excellent public school system, uh, and there are other educational alternatives here. Uh, we have the benefit of a major research university, the, the state's leading research university at Mississippi State, uh, and we have the cultural uh, nuances that come along with that. Yesterday, we cut the ribbon on a $21 million uh, music building, something that has been a a dream of Mississippi State students, faculty, and staff for a long time. And right now with that music building, with the Kent Seals Band Hall, and with the uh, uh, practice facility uh, for the band uh, behind it, we've got a complex for our students that are majoring in music or that are, are minoring in it and going into other disciplines that is competitive with any around the country. So. Uh, that will create uh, concerts, uh, opportunities for uh, people who are relocating to uh, be enriched culturally, and it all goes hand in hand. It you make really a great does. point. Quality of life is a big thing. I think that's come probably more in focus in business decisions of where to locate. 
uh, of late than it has been because there there tends to be a big delta now between the uh, the level of quality of life as you look across the country and and we got something to really boast about I think here in the state of Mississippi and and we should use that and we are uh, effectively in our economic development recruiting efforts uh, give us an update on Mississippi State uh, other than this fantastic announcement about the music facility so what's well going on? Uh, you know obviously uh, from the headlines, you know we're uh, involved in a, a search for a new athletic director after our uh, former director uh, took a similar position at Auburn. Dr. Keenum announced this morning the protocols for that uh, AD search. Uh, we've uh, we've identified a search firm that we'll be working with, uh, and Dr. Keenum said that uh, he's uh, he's done this uh, a couple of times now during his tenure, and that we want. Uh, really detour much from the protocols we've used before, but the, a national search is underway. Uh, we anticipate moving very purposely to fill that uh, position. Uh, we uh, we look forward to uh, uh, Auburn visiting us this weekend, <laughs> and uh, uh, we uh, we have every intention of, uh, of greeting them accordingly. I got you. Did you guys have a heads up on this, Sid? Was this unexpected? Uh, not not particularly expected, but uh, when you have good people and they're doing good work, uh, there, there's always the opportunity. Sure. And of course, uh, we we wished uh, we wished John well uh, in his pursuits. Uh, John and Nell were a uh, vibrant part of the community, the university community. We wished them well. Uh, no animosity at all. But we're moving forward to. Uh, bring the type of leadership to our athletics department that our uh, our student athletes, uh, our friends and fans uh, deserve, and and we'll we'll do that sooner than later. Yeah. Well, um, I'm sure you'll get somebody great. It's a great place to be, the AD, and you got a lot of good things going on in athletics here too. Well, you know, uh, we've we've found in in Mississippi that we've we've been in the right place at the right time. We've gone from sort of the Power Five to the Power Two, so uh, SEC AD jobs don't come open every day. We expect to have a very robust uh, list of candidates and uh, a lot of interest in the job. So uh, we're we're moving forward uh, expeditiously. Yeah. While we're on that uh, that subject, the subject of athletics, any thoughts you want to share about this whole NIL stuff? Uh, changing national landscape, it's part of it. Uh, uh, I have uh, I have mixed feelings as as somebody who uh, watched the process unfold, but you know, regardless how you feel about it, it's part of the reality of yeah. it, and. Uh, it was interesting here. Part of the reaction to John's departure uh, was that uh, our NIL uh, subscribers, basically, to the collective, uh, more than tripled. It increased. I saw that. And, and so I think it did put a bright line on the role that NIL uh, plays and will play moving forward. I have every expectation that our uh, fan base is going to respond appropriately and. Uh, I, I do think that uh, NIL can, and the portal, uh, both of those things kind of go hand in hand. I think those are going to continue to evolve. And at some point, uh, I think uh, it will be in the halls of Congress as much as it will in the halls of the SEC. I think Senator Wicker has some legislation he's sponsoring to try right. to standardize that. Right. Why, and, why is the NCAA acting in that regard? Well, uh uh, Gerard, I, I think I will uh, uh, keep that thought to myself. Uh, <laughs> Fair for, enough. Because we want to get along with the uh, NCAA. <laughs> but but I will say this: uh, uh, part of the changing landscape of uh, intercollegiate athletics uh, is NIL and and the portal. The other part is what role will the NCAA play moving forward? What role do the institutions want it and need it to play? Uh, and how do we uh, how do we incorporate these changes uh, moving forward? So I think that's part of it. Well, we'll be watching it carefully, as I'm sure you will as well. A absolutely. absolutely. Uh, good luck on the game today. Uh, I'll say it, Hale State for the game tomorrow. You guys need to take on Auburn and 
bring home the victory on that one. Well, we, we appreciate your support. Thank you. <laughs> Sid Salter, political analyst, chief communications officer, director of the Office of Public Affairs here at Mississippi State University. We are in Starkville. The Greater Starkville Development Partnership will